Happy Halloween, survivors! Walt Patiki here, producer at the story thus far. This episode is a public release of the Patreon supporter exclusive bonus episode we did back in July. If you are a Patreon supporter, and we really appreciate all your support, I hope you don't mind us sharing this episode publicly. We wanted to treat and not to trick. The brand new episodes I had originally planned for October are still in the works, I just need more time to edit them, since life did not cooperate this month. Life was, in fact, aggressively hostile. If you enjoy this episode, and why wouldn't you, then you'll be happy to know that a sequel bonus episode is in the works. That bonus episode will be a Patreon supporter exclusive, and it will be coming soon. Anyway. Thanks for listening. Spread the word and please support us on Patreon. And now, on with the show. You are listening to The Story Thus Far. The audio drama where no one involved knows what's happening next. Warning, this episode contains sounds of horror, terror, and disaster. It is highly recommended that you not listen to this episode while driving or performing precision activities, such as trick or treating, summoning demons, resurrecting the dead, applying Halloween makeup, stalking a victim, or evading the undead. Episode 9, Undercover Angles, created and performed by Walt Patiki, with special guest Jennifer Lavenhaar and Craig Patrickus. Hey Chief, Adrian Carlton from Forensics Data Services here. I'm submitting uh, results in audio form. So this uh, this job is a bit of a doozy, uh, but I think our retrieval attempts on the uh, item uh, number OB659, uh, bullet damaged hard drive, have yielded fairly decent quality audio reconstructions. Uh, from what remained of the files. The reconstructed uh, audio file will play uh, after my header here. Uh, the sound isn't perfect, but when you consider that speaker number one, uh, the director was using voice masking software, which we pretty well invalidated, uh, and the fact that these files had all actually been uh, deleted uh, before we even got to work. I mean, the sound quality is pretty amazing. I mean, one of ours actually put a bullet into the hard drive, which I know he did save the data from being uh, lost to a reformat in progress, uh, but you know, maybe encourage the field people to hustle more uh, with unplugging stuff before, you know, they open fire at it. Uh, Speaker number two, the one they call Mr. Blank or Mr. Blanc, his voice is... uh, well, he's an odd duck, you know. Uh, it sounds like maybe he was using some kind of a voice distortion, but it could also be that his voice just actually sounds that way. Either way, uh, we couldn't do anything with it, so uh, that's just as we were able to reconstruct it originally. Uh, bottom line is that analytics could not ID speaker number two. Okay, and uh, now for your listening pleasure, uh, my results. Project ability. Name redacted. Archive record number three, three, nine, zero, zero, four, nine, seven. Date stamp, April 20th, 2020, 1053 AM Eastern Standard Time. Lo- Location classified. Vocal subjects, director of project classified. Name. Name redacted. An unknown regarding. The distal artifact, ID number OB-7, artifact is considered a finale scenario catalyst. Get back to me when you have that warrant. Will do, boss. And have Tilson put together a team. 
Our mole has a lead on the gold track. Luba and Hourglass are planning something big and reckless, and I want to be all over them when it happens. Will the sand slip through your fingers when you clench your fists? I wonder. How in the hell did you get into my office, Blank? And how did you even get into this building? You pay me to get into impossible places. A six foot eight rail thin albino dressed like a spaghetti western black hat just waltzes into the heart of this operation. Oh, I gotta kill my whole security team for this. Point one, I didn't waltz. I move faster than that, more like a jitterbug. Two, go easy on your team. It's your training that failed. And three, you dress like a 70s TV high school teacher. You've got those stupid looking elbow patches and a bow tie a Muppet would be embarrassed to wear. Did anyone see you? I can't afford, you know, my wife bought me this tie. And I actually like the elbow patch. Did anyone see me? No alarms or dead people, so no. Stupid question. I would have phoned ahead, Mr. Director, but of course that would have been noticed by someone, wouldn't it? One of these days you're gonna get too arrogant for your own good, Blank. But not until somebody else can do for you the things I can. Sorry. I had a bad day. My gun jammed. It's a family heirloom. Wound up having to get creative on the job. Oh, sorry to hear that. No worries. It offered an opportunity for art therapy while I work. No details, please. Ooh, I wonder who just got locked in with who. So, did you have something for me? Or are you selling magazines so your class can visit the Holy Land? <laughs> nice. You might say I have a bone to pick with you. A disproportionately sized bone. Bone? You found it. You know where it is. I did. I do. The clue was in a recording I recently acquired. It was on an old cassette tape recorded sometime in the 90s. I found it on the body of one of the hourglass operatives. The body? You were serious. Oh, Jesus, we need to be more careful. I can't keep covering- Calm yourself. I always make it look like an accident, even if I use bullets. And believe me, it looked like a very gruesome, painful, <laughs> and ultimately hilarious accident. Besides, it had to be done. Your agents are all well-balanced, sane people. It makes them predictable and easy for me to come and go. But the Sands movement... Well, Luba's people are maniacs and religious fanatics. I get spotted sometimes. You can't beat crazy people for being great security, what with the paranoia. Fortunately, what makes them so hard to predict also makes them less than credible. And, of course, no one questions how reckless madmen have fatal accidents. Do you mind if I smoke, Blank? Not if you don't mind if I take a shit on your carpet. So... What you're saying is, yes, you mind. Okay, okay. This recording says where the artifact is. Oh, it's about time we got a lucky break. Yes, lucky indeed. The tape probably should have been destroyed a long time ago. It probably was thrown out. The intel was worthless to the Sands movement at this point. And just going back a moment to your previous request. Aside from this being a government-run facility with a no-smoking policy... I worry about your health. Try a patch or the nicotine gum. If you die, who on earth is ever going to understand anything I have to say? Except for those cult loonies. Wow. Uh, are we having a moment here, Mr. Blank? Time is unreal. So, sure, knock yourself out. Well, it's a good thing for us the cult crazies treat everything their beloved leader hoards or throws out like it's a magic talisman to be treasured. Imagine loving your all-knowing, all-powerful God so much you steal from his employees just to feel close to him. These people are as comically stupid as they are crazy. I need to hear this tape. I made a digital copy of it, of course. Shall I play it? Yes. Bring it closer, over here. Ah, the lamp is also a microphone, I suspected. 
You people document too much. A lot's at stake. You know that. We need to record everything. You want to record us listening to this recording so someone in the future can listen to the recording of us listening to the recording. <laughs> Spies are so fun. Hi, Sheriff Lawson. Thank you so much for helping me with my assignment. Well, hello, Miss Holly. Uh, I am honored that you would pick me to interview for your school project. Great. I'll start the interview then. <laughs> I would be happy to answer any questions you may so, have. So, um, did you always want to be a police officer? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I did not want to be a sheriff when I was young. Uh, I grew up right down the street from uh, Mr. Otis Redding, that's the famous Otis Redding soul singer. Memo, ask Dad about old people music. And uh, we used to get ourselves a bit of trouble, to be quite honest. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we were some uh, knee high to a grasshopper, but we were kicking it up some. What made you choose to be a police officer instead of a musician? Yeah, wasn't until 1976 when the Dawson Five, those five poor boys, were railroaded into confessions by Deputy Jack Hammock and the sheriff there. Memo, ask Mom and Dad about Dawson Five. For some reason, no one taught us this in school. I really started to realize that law enforcement was some place where I could do some good. I could be a voice for reason and honesty. So wow. I went there and enrolled myself in Kennesaw State University in 1978 and got myself a degree in criminal justice and I became a deputy right here in Terrell County shortly thereafter. Oh, dinner's in five minutes. Finish up on the phone there. Oh gosh, I have to get ready for dinner. Just one or two more questions, please. What's the strangest thing you ever had to deal with as a police officer? I was approached by old man Jenkins told me he had found something up at the uh, Moki Mounds that didn't look quite right to him. So one day I went up there with him and he showed me right there where it was. Damn, if it didn't look like the biggest bone I had ever seen. So I went back to my office and we subsequently reported it to the antiquities and historical people and such. And they went down totally and investigated what we had seen. We showed them right where it was one day back there in July. They looked at it. They studied it. We didn't hear from them again for weeks. And finally, I gave them a call. And I got the lady there on the phone. She told me that it had not, in fact, been a bone, that it was a petrified piece of wood. Wood? Like a tree? Now, damn it, there ain't no piece of wood I ever seen that looked like that. Gosh. Didn't look like no piece of wood. Look like a damn bone, like I said. Old man Jenkins done took that to his grave. I didn't get no answers. Every time I called, just was the same story. I went back up there. The whole damn thing was gone. Didn't see nothing. It's like the hole was never there. It's grass over and everything. Wow, a real mystery right here in town. Damn if I could make any sense of it. 
But ever since then, I realized I got to follow the truth no matter where it leads me. Sometimes I may not get there, but sometimes, well, sometimes, maybe I just might find out the truth and do some good in this world. That's what inspires me, Miss Holly. You answered that before I even asked it. <laughs> Holly, we're setting the table. Oh, Pooh, I have to get ready for dinner now. Oh, I hope this has been as enjoyable for you as it has been for me. Thanks so much for letting me do this interview. I know it's going to be the best one in class. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself. And if you have any more questions, anything at all, you'll be sure to come back and give me a shout, you hear? Okay, thanks. Well, I I anything? <laughs> like, um... Do you know if, if Jerry Wilkins is sweet on anyone? I'm, I'm asking for a friend. I know you and his grandmother are friends. And could you um maybe ask her maybe? All right, Miss Holly. All right. You say hi to your mama now you're here. I will. Okay. We'll see you real soon. We will. You still baking those pies? Well, as a matter of fact, I just learned to do lemon meringue and coconut custard. Oh, you are good. Hey, would you like me to bake one for you? Yeah, I will have one someday. It's no trouble and good practice. Oh, that's mighty nice of you, Miss Holly. Keep to your studies now. I will, you bet. Bye, Sheriff, and thanks. The bone? No, it can't be. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sure it is. It can't be the Pharaoh's finger. We're looking for a finger bone here. A fingertip. Not a tree. A fingertip. We still are. Probably. Or at least we're looking for the equivalent body part on something else. We've been looking for a mummified piece of a human body less than an inch long. The trouble was that up until now, we thought we were looking for something small and mundane. We should have known better. I should have known better. Please tell me that finger is just a name that they gave to the artifact. That it's uh, some symbolic religious rhetoric? No. No, I don't think so. I think a few decades back, that old fellow Jenkins and the good sheriff uncovered an actual fingertip. The length of a tractor trailer. Only they thought they had found a dinosaur bone. As if dinosaurs ever got that big. If that thing was really a fingertip, then... How big could that... The creature actually be? If it goes by human proportions? A colossus that boggles the mind. You know, I'd like to see that someday. Truly, I would. Of course, I'd like to know when to stop looking at it before I went crazy. Going insane seems to be the price paid for witnessing these sorts of phenomenon. That's why Irving Hervel is all bananas and no split. All right, well, at least if it's that big, and we know what we're looking for now, it can't be that hard to find it. Oh, I know exactly where it is now. We have to move on this. Things are looking bad. Nobody believes me. Not even the others on this project. They think this is just about religious fanatics, Branch Davidian shit, and maybe drugs and tax evasion. You know, some militia kooks. They have no idea what's really going on. Nobody wants to have an idea what's really going on. And we know better now, don't we? Why couldn't Ronald Luba just be a garden variety wacko instead of the great all-knowing prophet of the sands? All the artifacts we've uncovered, the translations your people have provided, the evidence in the fossil record. The suppressed evidence. Yes, suppressed. It's astounding. Staggering. The good Reverend Luba and the bad humor man Irving Harvell, they didn't start this whole thing. The Hourglass Organization and the Sands Movement, they've gone by different names decade after decade. And they have roots that go deep. I mean centuries deep. Deeper than the history of this young nation, certainly. Forces have been trying to open the way between worlds for a long time. It's insane. Actually, I thought we had agreed there were sound scientific principles at work here. 
If there weren't, there wouldn't be a problem. No, I mean, it's insane that they actually want to do this. If they succeed, it really will be the end of the world as we know it. Well, that's the funny thing about religion. Most of the time, the end of the world is something the fanatics can't wait to make happen. Salvation, rapture, and all that. And as for it being the actual end of the world as we know it, well, it seems to be the end of the world as we know it every morning I wake up. The world keeps ending more and more frequently. Tell that to the dinosaurs. They didn't make a very strong recovery the last time this apparently happened. No one is going to recover this time. Not if Luba uses that uh, bone or whatever the artifact is to make his weapon. Maybe not. I used to love Godzilla movies, you know. He was a monster, but he was usually kind of the good guy. Or at least he wasn't as evil and dangerous to the world as the real bad guys in the movies. And the humans in the movies keep trying to kill Godzilla. And they always realize, almost too late, every single time, that killing Godzilla would seal the world's doom. We need to save the monster that's coming. We need to stop Luba from killing our monster. The last time worlds overlapped, this beast pharaoh thing, well, it was the only thing that could clean up the entire mess before I went back home. Thanks to that pharaoh, Earth staged a comeback. If Luba's people succeed in, <laughs> dare I call it, deicide? If they kill the pharaoh, if the pharaoh really can be killed, I have absolutely no faith that the human race, this miserable and pathetic bacteria culture we call humanity, is going to stand a chance against something as old, intelligent, and alien as what the pharaoh keeps at bay. I should just have let Hervel kill Luber. I shouldn't have intervened. You know, actually, I should have had you kill both of them. Irving Hervel is batshit crazy and dangerous as hell. The things he knows. It's no wonder he went crazy. We need him now, though. We should reach out to him, make a deal. Not my department. I steal things and kill people, remember? I don't pay you to kill people. No, but you paid me not to let Hervel kill Luber and see where that got you. You said you know where the bone is. Well, way back then, the good sheriff called a university to get the bone identified. A student took photos and sent copies of those photos to several renowned paleontologists. One of those paleontologists, a Dr. Brandon Martell, had the entire thing declared an obvious hoax. He even provided samples of the bone that turned out to be artificially petrified wood with a bone-like appearance. He went through an awful lot of work to discredit that discovery. Hmm. Yes, hmm. Dr. Martell then liquidated all of his personal assets, quickly amassed a lot of cash in a short period of time. During that same time period, someone, Martell no doubt, rented excavators and paid cash to dozens of laborers for a secret dig at night in Terrell County, Georgia. He ran an excavation crew with heavy machinery in the middle of the night and nobody heard or saw him? What was Martell, a magician? Yes, I suppose in a way he was. Classic misdirection is a magician's best friend. It certainly would have had to have been an amazing coincidence that the same night those diggers were at work with their machinery, there was also a fire at a nearby agricultural chemical plant. It spread toxic fumes and they had to evacuate all the surrounding towns. Oh, Jesus. Yes, just before the fire, somebody was paying a lot of money on the black market for just about every gas mask and piece of respiration equipment in the area that they could get their hands on. There were even two medical warehouse robberies the night before the fire. The only things taken were breathing and hazmat gear. Even local fire departments and emergency services were hit by the thefts, which, of course, slowed down their ability to contain the chemical fire. Am I going to be able to find Martel? Is he still alive? Not sure. He vanished, but he did vanish with a promising young teaching assistant. A young go-getting archaeologist named... Ronald Luber. Yes, Ronald Luber, preacher to madmen. Ronald Luber, who is now the Grand Hoo-Ha, or whatever they call it, leader of the Sands Cult. We know where he is. He almost never leaves the hourglass compound. He calls it a campus. Makes it sound respectable. 
Almost. Mm, a final note. A big rig that was contracted to haul something massive away from Terrell County around the time of the fire broke down on its way out west. Apparently, whatever load the truck was carrying was too heavy. A second truck had to be sent out. Both drivers were found dead about a week later. The murder weapon was believed to have been a glass knife in both cases. Authorities blame devil worshippers and Dungeons and Dragons. Of course, we know who uses glass knives. All right, he hired a bunch of people to dig on the excavation crew. Did you run across any of those people? A few. A lot of them have since passed on, and most of the survivors have severe respiratory issues. Beware black market hazmat gear. I also have it on good authority that some of the excavation crew are buried out in the wilderness of Tyrell County. They were digging in a hurry at night, not to mention most of them were junkies desperate for cash. That was lots of tragic accidents just waiting to happen. All right. I need to get people inside Luber's compound. If I put together a team, will you join? I do not play well with others. Besides, just try explaining me to HR or an ethics panel. You are a scary dude. I'm glad we're on the same side. Oh, I highly doubt we are on the same side. It's just that we can each live with what the other one wants to do. No one's going to survive what Luba and his sand cultists want to accomplish. Also, I pay well. Yes, I do so enjoy buying nice things with money. Why don't you just steal them? Ethics, of course. I'd have to charge myself to do the job. And my rates, as you know, are quite high. I have a lot of calls to make. Where are you off to next? I think it's time to look further into the sordid past of Mr. Irving Hervell, the ice cream king. Let me see what leverage I can dig up to convince that absolute maniac to help us save the world. Save the world? Ugh, can't believe I even said that. It's gotta help us that he's tried to kill Luber at least once already, right? The enemy of my enemy and all that shit, doesn't it? Hello? Hello? Locked door, no windows, yet he's gone again. Oh, fucking spooky ninja shit. I'm behind you. <gasps> Classic misdirection. Asshole. You locked me in here, remember? If I really could walk right through walls, do you think I'd let you find out? Fine, I'm disengaging the locks. You can... And of course he's already gone. And I swear to God, Blank, if you're behind me again, I will shoot you. Barry, Hello? I want an emergency meeting of all the department heads in five minutes. Oh, uh, sure, boss. Uh, can we bring our lunch? Sure you can. And if we're all really good, I may know a guy who can get us ice cream, man. If... End of record. Oh, hey, uh, this is, uh, Agent Carlton one more time. Uh, we just, uh, like to make one suggestion. Uh, if you've noticed that the retrieved, uh, date stamp from uh, the project Obelisk card drive uh they use that really cool uh retro uh british sounding like digital robot voice and i was wondering um if we could budget for that because it's just really neat and it gets you know it's it, i don't get to do field work and any little thing would be you know would help my morale Okay, right, thank you thanks both it's Carlton, C-A-R-L-T-O-N. Thank you. You have been listening to a special bonus episode of The Story Thus Far. Young Holly was played by Jennifer Lavenhaar. Sheriff Lawson was played by Craig Petrakis. Carlton, the director, and Mr. Blank were played by Walt Patiki. All sound effects used in this episode were downloaded from freesound.org. Until next time. Uh, also, Boss, if you were requisitioning anything, um, my office chair, the, 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 the armrest is uncomfortable.